I did actually tear up a little bit though, like when the the pre like the other team, like for some reason that with that random like third year just just starts rambling about stuff. This guy's just some of the things he said and just like hit like his other teammates, and they all kind of like just started tearing up. Oh like, yeah. yeah, you mean that the captain, me. sir? You mean the, the captain? captain? He's the random him. third year. Dude, what's his name? What's his name? He's the captain. That's oh, all yeah. you know, That's right? Name. Terrible <laughs> respect. He's the captain. <laughs> the anime izakai podcast week 12 of the fall 2020 season on this show we'll be discussing the current season of anime every every week i'm your host david and joining me today we have stren hello next up we have ku yo yo next up we have taylor hello and finally we have brian hello <laughs> all right um just some quick anime news to get out of the way first uh, a whole bunch of season twos or i guess continuations of show so we got uh Staying on Million Lives got second season confirmed for July. So good news for Ku and Shren. Yes. And then Damachi is getting uh, another OVA on the 28th. I'm assuming, I'm, I don't know if they're going to do the same route or they're going to announce season four after that. So we shall see. Because that's basically what happened for season three. They're yeah. even doing it the same exact way too, because just like from like the teaser of the OVA, it's going to be like another, it's, it's another, uh, you know, uh, bathing suit one. So I'll take it. <laughs> But it's Christmas, guys. Christmas. This was like the same time, like last year, that they released the OVA. I'm pretty sure, and that ended up being some really weird ass uh, OVA. But it's Christmas. Yeah, hey, whatever. I mean, I would take one of those too. But whatever. All right. And then uh, for Johan, for Johan in chat, we got uh, even Yelian movie finished up. So, um, because the movie comes out on January 23rd, so it's all ready to go. People are waiting. What? what? Cost, David. People wait. People waited eight years for this because you know the director thought it was a good idea to take a break and go direct Shin Godzilla. This costed somebody his eye, though. <laughs> and then, um, I think one of the other news is um, uh, the record of Ragnarok manga got an anime adaptation. I've been hearing some good things about it, so we'll see how it goes. I, I heard it's basically like fate because it's a bunch of like a bunch of the legendary heroes just doing a, a tournament arc. So we'll see how that goes. My God, so and then we're gonna move right into uh, Jutsu Kaisen. Um, so I thought that was a pretty good episode. We had a huge fight between um, Yuji and I keep forgetting the guy's name with the patches, but huge fight between that. I'm surprised it actually went all the way with um, actually killing off Junpei. I thought I thought it was gonna be like uh, Yuji would have to choose having to, to kill Junpei. So I actually like this direction they go with. Um, it's it's uh because one of my pet peeves in anime is like not having consequences for action so i feel like they're actually um they're actually doing big things with like with like you know killing off junpei and having yuji like you know going that rage so i want to hear everyone else's thoughts <laughs> I totally I mean, agree with you, David, because I had started reading the manga before this anime came out, and when I reached this part in the manga, I cried like a baby because I <laughs> loved Junpei so much. And despite the fact that I found it incredibly traumatizing, I agree with you that I tend to like when things have consequences. I get really bored and disappointed quickly if there aren't. So although this isn't one of the consequences I would have liked, I mean, you know, that's life. So, but it was a great episode and I thought it was handled really well. And the fighting sequences in this episode were really top notch too. Yeah. Really great episode. Anybody else take the floor? Did we really think Jupe was going to survive? Cause the man wasn't in the OP. He wasn't in the end credits. He was in the OP <laughs> a lot. Was he yeah, really? I'm pretty sure yeah. he was in OP. That's why I didn't think he was going to die. That's why it shocked me so much when, he died in the manga. Where did they show him in the OP? I don't remember this. I remember the panda yeah. running on the rooftops, but uh, that's all you remember. That's why you don't remember anything else. I actually don't remember either, Koo, so don't worry about it. And then we okay. watched the OV we watched the opening every damn episode. It's too, in the know? opening at the very I know he's in it a couple times, but like right at the end, it's like the last screen that you see before it transitions to the show. And you see him sitting there like underneath a tree eating like a picnic with everybody and everybody looks super happy. See right there, right there's a death flag. So then how mad would you guys be if they brought him back somehow, miraculously? 
uh, I mean, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be mad because I, <laughs> I hate I hate revival in anime, man. David knows I'm okay with that. God, yeah. but by I'm okay whatever with it means, sometimes. even though I actually didn't really, I mean, like he was he was okay, but I mean, we got like I, I didn't feel like we got nearly enough time with him. I felt bad for him more than anything. I mean, but, oh yeah, definitely. Like, sure. cause yeah, like I was saying last, yeah. Okay. Like, what a shitty way to go out, dude. Like, you make friends with what do you deem good guy, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna kill you now. Yeah, and then you, then you turn, like, your last thing, you turn into, like, a short frog alligator-looking thing. <laughs> well, the reason I say that is because it looks like uh, Sakuna is able to heal or revive people, too, not just uh, Yuji. But for no, some reason... I... I think it's more like he didn't do it because he basically, he, like, I guess, because didn't they make it sound like he can't do that? I don't know. I, it, the thing was, is the confusing part was, I don't remember what pact they're talking about because it looks like he was testing Yuji. Like, oh, he doesn't remember the pact. And we kind of don't know, like, the full deal of the pact either. So I don't yeah, we don't, yeah. yeah we, we don't know, like, what it actually consists of. We just know that there's a pact. Right. Or, in a sense, kind of a. Yeah, but instead of Cheryl saying no, he just laughed at him and, and ridiculed him. So I don't know if it's not possible, but it, it is uh, a shonen anime, so it wouldn't surprise me if they would somehow bring him back. To life. Yeah, it's it's not clear. I think the way it sounded like is maybe he could have undid the transformation. I think that's, that's what he was talking about. But oh. yeah, it wasn't clear though. So I thought it was pretty cool too, like when he tried to like go into like his soul or heart, and then basically Sukuna was like, "Dude, just get the fuck out of here." That's like so. It's like <laughs> it's like an OP thing, but I I think the way they've done it in the story so far, like I I believe it because like they keep bringing up how powerful like Sukuna is and how much. The only thing is that like it seems like it still seems like uh like Yuji's is getting a free ride with being the vessel, but so far I'm not complaining too much about it. I think they're still handling it right. Usually it would bother me, but this time like it, it didn't, so I'm I'm fine with the way they're handling it so far. Yeah, I really don't have much more for this episode. <laughs> like it was kind of like a fight. And, uh, well, uh, so I'm... In with that save, dude. What's up? Nanami coming in with that save at the very end. Yeah. yeah, I love that guy. Honestly, I would I would cry way more if if he passed <laughs> than anybody else. If Sasha watches this show, I think he would actually really like the show. I mean, it was just like wasn't there just like a few kind of like lull episodes but then it picked up i think it picked up like it's been just, it just uh, ramping up. i mean we'll have to ask killjoy because killjoy knows more about sasha's taste it's i'll say it's way more consistent but like yeah. I, I think sasha is still i think he's still looking for, he's still going through his backlog of the top tier shows so and so far he hasn't reached it yet i think he well, well uh the uh, i keep forgetting the guy's name with the guy with the blonde guy with the glasses like i think that would eat by far be uh be Sasha's favorite character, and it's his favorite voice actor. So I think just, like, from that guy, I think he would end up watching the show. Or he would end up really liking the show. But, we'll, you know, we'll see. Time will tell. Um, I'm hoping that after this, the term arc was still good. Like, as I really like, I really like this arc with, with Junpei. So, like, I hope, like, I don't know. I usually don't like tournament arc, so hopefully I get proven wrong next time. Or next arc. I think it's I think it's gonna be just like a typical <laughs> oh god <laughs> tournament arc. I don't think we're gonna get man. How... With the animation, I don't know if it's gonna be. How did Stride more... become the pessimistic one and I became I know, optimistic? Right? Like, <laughs> honestly, I think this tournament arc will be really good. Only because the panda. I was gonna say, you uh, just want to see the panda. Like a panda. I just want to see the panda. You also, I feel like you'll get a more like good feel of everybody else's powers too. And then when, when uh, when Yuji comes in as like a surprise factor, that's gonna be badass. His entrance is either gonna be goofy as shit, or it's gonna be just the most epic shit ever. Yeah. Because like the only other character I really care about now is just, just Megami. So hopefully we'll get more character development then from the tournament arc. Really, that's the only one you care about. Yeah, because I don't remember any. I mean, I guess I remember like no, like Nobaru, but like I. Wait, oh, do you just mean in the tournament arc? In the tournament arc, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, besides I besides think... Yuji and like and Gojo, like yeah, like Megami is the only other one I can remember really, and the panda because the panda, but. He's just he's just like a mascot character right now. He's not like an actual character. They make his name very easy to remember. Yeah, so the mascot character. I shed a tear Emotion a little bit tear. when uh when uh freaking uh Yuji like had a flashback of what it, it would have been like if he joined like the sorcerers and stuff. I was like, yeah, that was that was a little bit like goddamn. He could have been right there. I was like shit. Yep. Good man lost. <laughs> they just had a, they had to add that for the fans. Just to make them feel a little bit worse about the whole <laughs> situation. Hey, it worked. 
It did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> so anyway. So yeah, so really good, uh, good episode. Um, good animation by Mappa. So again, hoping they don't overload themselves with Jujutsu Kaisen and Tekken Titan and Chainsaw Man. So. <laughs> So, yeah, so I guess not much to say for this week. Uh, we'll uh, jump right on ahead to uh, Haikyuu. This show, man. And I again, I didn't watch this, so it's up to you guys. You you guys will take the floor from here. Uh, okay, well, um, Brian, I guess your kind of uh, overall thoughts on this season. Uh, could have been better. In what way? Uh, animation, you know, story building, hype building. No. Hype definitely, yeah. It could have been like, better with hype. All those things could have been done a good amount better, but at yeah. the same time, it's like, what are you gonna do, right? It's not. It's not like it's the final. It's, <laughs> it's just literally the beginning of what before the quarters, right? Day two, sir. It's a top sixteen, two. so it would be quarterfinals, wouldn't it? Quarter? No. No. Ra- no. Ta- sure. Round of sixteen, and then quarters. Okay. They yeah, considered this right before yeah. quarters. Day two. Yep. So yep. Yep. yeah. 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 It's. Uh, like story building, I think would have been better. Just like if they, I guess if they did, if they went more into like the other team, they instead of just kind of showing like brief clips here and there on like you know the twins, they showed a little bit of their backstory, which really it was just not. I don't think it was really the greatest backstory. Um, I they showed some of the other characters. I mean, uh, but it was not not nearly enough. I I am. They also they didn't. They gave a lot of like uh, screen time to, to Ryu as well, which I'm always okay with. Um, for, like, I think it was like cross and all. Like every time, like I don't really expect them to build anymore with the characters for that, but I always appreciate it. Uh, but no, it's with those I definitely agree with. A- animation, I mean, was by far. I mean, like like uh, I've complained about it like you know this season, the previous season. It could have been much much better, but uh, I mean, it, it did improve towards the end. I mean, again, guys, it is a sports anime. I don't think you guys should be expecting like top-notch quality anime the whole Dude, way through. The problem but... is though, I've only my first one really ever was High Q, and it was like such a high bar for sports, uh, for sports anime for me. And then it's like anything like anything else has just not been. It just hasn't been near that. At least the first three seasons of it. Well, I mean, maybe I'm giving them like a buy because I'm really biased. I really love sports animes, but <laughs> you should maybe maybe High Q just spoiled us for seasons one, two, and three, right? And they were just sick of it. Like, you know, let's focus on maybe. God, I want to say let's focus on the story. But to be honest with you, I kind of hate the, the the pacing of the story through until yeah. like the last few episodes. So, you know, maybe maybe they're just taking a break before the most epic season five. Right. The battle of the garbage dump. That's what we're all waiting for. So if, if, if they sacrifice this to make that like as epic as they can be, I think I'll be fine. Yeah, then it would be a completely worth it trade off. Very Do you really call them the garbage dump though anymore? Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of like the sense. yeah, that's the name that they made for themselves. Yeah. Okay. So, well, all right. But that's if they make it season five, guys. If yeah, if you see we're gonna get like a little bit of an extended break, it's gonna be like a year, and then we're gonna hear, hey, like season five, right? And then mm-hmm. boom, season five comes out. Third season quality, dude. I'm gonna shit my pants and rip. <laughs> David, what what happened? Or not David. Uh, Brian, what happened with uh with uh with Snafu? After Let's season two, speak of that show. Okay. Oh, no, I'm just saying, like, how, how long? Show, like, how long? Five years. Uh, yeah, not even. Five years. Longer. Five years. It, no, it because no, 2015, I believe, the second season came out, and then <laughs> we didn't get the third season until 2020. Listen, man, Snafu <laughs> doesn't have the hype level of IQ. Yeah, also, yeah, also, yeah. Strand, Snafu is a light novel series and ha- Haikyuu is a weekly manga. I suppose. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see the time limit, though. Wait. Isn't. No, no, never mind. Uh, uh, Attack of Titans monthly, so never mind. But, you know, it took a while to come out, too. You know, you know uh, for some reason, I don't know if you guys watched, like, through the end credits of this recent episode. Yes. And, like, you know when, like, he was talking to his grandfather? Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. I was like, for some reason, I was picturing like a like a side storyline where like his grandfather passed away from natural causes right before the fucking. Oh God. And I legit was thinking that in my mind oh, my while God. they were talking to each other, and I almost cried just from thinking about it. Oh my God! Oh, my God. Like, oh, dude. That was fuck, dude. What the and hell? Sad ass shit. Oh. If any, if anything, that oh, would no. have to happen after the battle of Nekoma. I think yeah. that's what would have to happen. 
I, I I did actually tear up a little bit though, like when the the pre like the other team, like for some reason that with that random like third year just just starts rambling about stuff. This guy's just some of the things he said and just like hit like his other teammates, and they all kind of like just started tearing up. Oh yeah, year. you mean that the captain? Me. Sir? You mean the, the captain? captain? He's the random right? third year. Dude, you know? What's his name? What's his name? He's the captain. That's oh, all yeah? you can go, that's right? <laughs> Dude, with respect, he's the captain. All right. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. No, hmm. honestly, I, I don't even know who that guy was. Like, I remember, like, when he first kind of, like, just kind of came in. Like, <laughs> I remember Taylor was hating on him so much. It's like, who the <laughs> fuck is this random guy just coming in, just talking like he's a philosopher? <laughs> <laughs> like, it basically just, he just came, he just, just it's all of a sudden, it's like almost like where I, I pictured his team just looking yeah. to the side, like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> where the hell did he come from? Just some random yeah, guy sitting out there on their, their I was team like, bench. I was like, this is like the 11th hour. Who is this new random person that's coming in that's just like, has like 10 minutes of exposition telling me like stuff I already know about volleyball. Like, let's keep moving. And I guess it was the captain. That's right. <laughs> he, the, he the captain. <laughs> just a well, he looks so much younger than like all of them. So it didn't even occur to me. He looks mm. kind of like the same one. I actually thought the twins were the third years. And oh, I was wrong. yeah. I was wrong. And, but then I remembered, I, I believe that they were with, where, wasn't one of them with Kageyama in like the, no, the training the, game? The okay. They were. The well, I think they were second gotcha. years, well, not first years. I think Kageyama was the only first year that was sent to that, or invited to that training. Oh, show. okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see them again. Maybe. I mean, they kind of. This says on the Inter High, so. Yeah, yeah, they did set up a future tournament arc, I guess. That's like super far into the future, though. Yeah. Dude, when. Uh... Oh my god, when uh when, when uh, Crossano did win though, and they basically just show like the third years, I keep thinking, yes, we still get to see these guys, because I just kept thinking like, damn, like if they would have lost, like that would have been it, like you know they would have been done, it would have been just you know sad, depressing. Yeah, and then, uh... that's that's really the only main reason that I would probably pick Crossano to want to win. Oh really? Okay. Because I just love those third years so much, but otherwise, I mean, it is so close for me between the two teams, like b- between both teams. I I don't know. It's it's going to be really devastating for whoever loses, no matter what. Dude, th- these downtime episodes too, when uh they're watching themselves like on the news, and like uh basically he, he <laughs> yeah. just reached out to Kaga. He was like, hey, oh, you see my uh, you see my return? And Kaga, I'm still like, nah, I didn't see a damn thing. And then that like oh, all that man. stuff just starts happening again. It just like those episodes are just so good. Like I, I honestly don't like for animation, don't care about it at all. Like their back and forth are just so good. Yeah, Where they are, are really good. I love those episodes too. Why are you laughing, Brian? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> uh, but, uh... Uh, another week another weak point though in this season is I don't like or this season and also the the previous the first half of the season. I don't remember really any like memorable music, but like I remember like Second and third season, second and third season, like especially like, constantly, like you just hear the music just come out and you just you know you get like the goosebumps, you get like, like, intense, excited. I don't mm-hmm. really really remember any of that like those moments. I just remember hearing jazz. I'm thinking jazz is not the time to play this day of music for these seeds. Yeah, uh, I think music was one of the biggest feelings of this whole season, to be honest. You know, guys, it, it was I'm, so weak. Like it really anything. helps set the tone and, and feel of any scene, and they're. There, the music was so bad. You, if you were like, if you're watching an anime, you should. If you weren't actually watching it, if you were only hearing the music, you should be able to like, kind of have an idea of like what's going on, right? It should set an atmosphere. And with this, you would have no idea because he's right. It's just like casual elevator music jazz. <laughs> Maybe the bunch of hipster volleyball players. You never know. But yeah, all of a sudden, like some guy, like the, whoever took like took over like this season, is like it's like oh that previous shit. Nah, I hear jazz. Ugh. Jazz seems like it fits. But I, I actually would have rather taken like I would have I would have rather had music I guess like uh if I had to pick between that and, like uh, with the, the animation because like mm-hmm. even there, there's previous anime like where the scenes weren't really memorable with animation wise but like but it felt more epic just because like the music that like, you got like the music got you into it mm-hmm. I didn't get any of those vibes I bet you you get basically bad animation and then with just jazzy music yep well I mean I think it's fine I I think I can appreciate the fact that they fine. tried to. They try to expand it to a different territory, so I think that's fine. Because if you if you constantly had the same genre or the same band uh, make music for each season, it would get kind of stale, wouldn't you think? Nah, hell no. We'll you talk know, about I that. really we'll talk about that with... you later. 
I really disagree with this. I feel like they didn't try to go in a new direction and they just got fucking lazy. Like, I feel like they just downloaded like whatever basic music they could find and threw it in there because I don't, Whoa. it had no feeling to it. So what direction are you trying to go for? I mean, That's a big accusation lady. Well, I mean, I, did you really enjoy the music? Like, cool. Did you enjoy the music or did you just, did it just not bother you? It didn't bother me. Oh, yeah, God. that's the most you can say about it is that it might not bother you, but it has no nothing to it at all. It's like the most bare bones sounding stuff I've ever heard. No impact. Yeah, I don't know, because I, yeah. I really do think that right. made a big difference. I eventually got basically used to the animation and it didn't bother me as much. <laughs> but like the music still really bothered me that the the um, direction and how they paced it in the music, I think, were really where it suffered. Well, to be fair, like in the very beginning, I didn't like the the, the music direction. I didn't like the animation. Um, but like throughout time, as I watched the episode, it just bothered me less to the point where I just kind of didn't care as much about it. You got you get you got used to it, man. Right. That's what they wanted. That's what they wanted. You settled. You settled, Koo. <laughs> but what <laughs> is the wanted. point of this anime, guys? All right, that's what I'm talking. To get you about. hyped. And I can't get hyped. You weren't hyped. <laughs> you weren't hyped with the last few episodes. And to be fair, maybe it's because okay. of the lack of plot, right? Hold on, hold on. Like I, I got like the last episode. Like it had some hype moments, but I actually I like the Ryu moments more. But like the hype moments in the third season right. by far beat like anything from this from like this season and also the first half of the season. Right, but it did give you like some tense moments, right? Like moments yeah. of anticipation and whatnot. Even with the shitty music, you still felt something there, right? So that really? means that even with the shitty music and like the shitty animation, like the the high tense moments or like the the climax of each set or whatever, it still was good enough to make you feel that way. So I think they still did their job. I feel like maybe they're just trying something new with season four because that's the only explanation I can think of. At I, this point, but I don't. I don't think they tried any. They tried to do anything new. I think it was basically just like the new team. I think that's just what they had. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm really hoping, like, if if they do, sorry, uh, Taylor, but so, but if they do decide to do like a like a if they get greenlit for like a fifth season, mm-hmm. let's say you know, like if it takes like a, a while for that to actually happen, I wouldn't. Right. I would. I'd be okay. Like if they actually end up like a same animation studio, but like a different team working on it. You know, like the third season team. But I'm biases all hell so we'll see but uh what um what what would you guys give this season mm. i agree but david's favorite part you gave it a nine hell no <laughs> I, thought, I thought you said nine too i was like that's kind of high basically I take the nine and flip it a six, give it a I six? Give it a yeah six. <laughs> i think i'm gonna give it a six too that's what i'm leaning towards yep like mm-hmm. it had a, it had a couple good episodes, but for ma- majority of it, I don't really remember remember it. It wasn't very memorable for me. Right. Um, besides, like the last episode and the Ryu moments. Like honestly, even Nishinoya's like moment got ruined. Like, I, like they should have given him way more time for like th- for like his time to shine than what they gave him. Hmm. Oh, I mean, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if because I thought the ending was done fairly well. Uh, although maybe yeah, the ending was done well. Bit. A little bit too late because I gave it a seven. Like the beginning was very lackluster and it made it like it was really drawn out and, and I hated that. But I feel like the ending kind of saved it for me, like the last two or three episodes. Dude, mine was like one point off of yours, man. <laughs> yeah, but a six? Oh my <laughs> goodness. That's just trash. Uh Brian? Uh I would give it also a seven. Okay. Uh yeah. reasoning? Yeah, I mean it wasn't like absolute dog shit. I mean, it has place like definitely it has places to improve. I mean, I think a six is good, not like dog shit. Yeah, according to my <laughs> enemy list, six is I think fine. It's just barely passing, sir. All right, I think mean, barely <laughs> passing. That's not the scale that everyone uses though. Seven is like the bare, the minimum for everyone's scale. That's my scale, David. Basically, seven is like yeah, is like it's the minimum like for everyone's scale. But I've changed my ways, David. I've uh, I've uh, I've learned how to use sixes and lower, <laughs> sadly. Oh god! Something I was ever hoping that I, I would ever have to do. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. It's it's hard to defend the two though because you guys do bring up good points, but yeah, it's uh, I'm, I, don't, I don't think it was that bad. We're uh, we're weighing it from the previous seasons though. Like if this was basically like the first season, just kind of going into it, and like we right. like or if, uh, let's say if this was the same team throughout like from the beginning that it was that mm-hmm. it was doing all this animation. 
I probably would have actually given it higher, uh, just because it's, that's what it's what it's been. So it's like when you're, but then when you're weighing it, but, but it's like almost kind of comparing with like the previous seasons. So I feel like I have to knock it down and be, I guess, I like guess fairly you know, fairly harder with it. Well, like I said, that's that's understandable, but yep. uh, it's it's not the route I would have taken with it. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but does uh, anybody have anything else? Oh, did you guys enjoy that fan service towards the end though, the bath scene when you saw that butt? Man, that is some some some. What butt, butt did we see? Wasn't it just Hinata? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I was like, "Whoa, what's going hey, on here?" Hey, nope, nope, nope. We do not. Nope, nope. He's got that. And then basically, you got Skishima just blasting him his ass back in the back, back in the pond. Not the if pond, it was Nekoma's whatever. like shower scene, this would be a different story. But no, nah, mostly wow. that was just Buy funny. much. Okay. <laughs> okay, so a six is fine. A seven is good. This was this is fine. No, I, think, I still think it was above average, uh, because of the the average anime is. Hmm. Is fairly trash. Uh, agree to disagree, sir. All right, man. All right, whatever. It's okay. I agree <laughs> with you, Threaten. I'm giving it a six, too. Thank you. I'll back you up. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm you guys live them, together. So. It's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all I got. I, honestly, even though I'm, I'm trashing this shit like crazy, I still want a fifth season. That's what I'm especially, saying. especially since it's it's Krasino and Nekoma, I want it to be like just. Top notch. I want it to be third season quality. I mean, it has to be it's better than than Shira Torizawa. It's it's Nekuma, you yeah. uh, know. That's like that. That's a bar. bar yeah. Dude, I'll I'll go back to second. Like second, give me second season, third season. It's gonna be it's gonna be just top notch. I, I like. I, then it would just it would be so good. But we'll see. Yep. All right. So I guess that's Ooh, it on. for the season finale of High Q. So yeah, hopefully you get that. Season five announcement. Um, I guess next we'll go on to Higurashi. Oh um, man, guys, this isn't a four episode. This is a five episode thing, I think. So, it's, more, it's more than four, definitely. So, right, right. But man, dude, like this episode was pretty nice. I can't think of anything negative about like this episode. It feels like they're just gonna get things done, and this is gonna be the happy ending route. Like when Oishi stepped in. Well, well, yeah. The weird part that was. Oishi just happened to show up during that uh, the town council meeting. He just sat down, and no one like even like acknowledged that he was there. He was just there. So I thought that was really weird. I will say, uh, I'll say that um, what Keiichi did, he did the right thing. Like this is what you're supposed to do. It's just for me, like this is such a roundabout way of, of Japanese culture where like, you can't just like directly do things. You have to like where you have to get all of the support from all all the other people. It's like man, this is so roundabout. Like. <laughs> So it was like it was annoying, kind of annoying for me to watch. But it's like I understand it's the culture, so I couldn't really dock it for that. So that's like that's the only other thing is like just my personal like my personal thing. Like I thought it was around that way, but he did do the right thing. So I'm not really liking this season that much, <laughs> and I didn't like this episode at all, and I don't like this arc at all, and. <laughs> Really? Why is that? pretty much it just like nothing it doesn't really contain any of the stuff that i liked about higurashi um like i like i guess as somebody who has watched the original and who knows a little mo bit more about what's going on than you guys do mm -hmm. like in my head i'm just constantly thinking to myself what's the point of this <laughs> like i i literally can't figure out like i did what this season adds to like the lore or the universe. I was gonna say, yeah, it is really weird how this arc we had no mention at all about the festival or like the curse or like anything. It's basically, and also like Rika just being super like, like she she just broke character basically and like went full like t like timeline mode. So like that's like the only thing it really did. It's just basically made Rika more of a character. But yeah i just i literally just don't know where it's going and it's just all of like it's i mean i don't know like it's fine that we're going towards like a happy ending for this arc but i mean this is we're like halfway through now before we go into the next part and i just literally for the life of me cannot figure out where it can go from here or what the point is and i i don't know i've uh, said it before but i really hate this arc so much i feel like oh my god especially when they were talking to the grandma like the back and forth <laughs> Like, that's, that that's, conversation that's, lasted for fucking ever. That's what I was talking. <laughs> that's what I was talking about when I say roundabout way. That's what, that's why I, I didn't like 
Because Japanese culture, yeah. But I'll let Kugo, because I have something else to say, too. I mean, I thought it was pretty yeah, funny with the fact that Keiichi kept threatening the, like, the grandmother of the Yakuza's that he was yeah, but... kill her with bodyguards there. <laughs> and then the response that she gave back, I thought it was pretty funny. The whole, the whole, like... First time! But then there was, like, five times after that. She, he'd be like, never mind, I guess I will bow, and I'll say thank you. She'd be like, ah, oh, that's not enough. And he'd be like, never mind, I'm gonna kill you and then they, they would go through the whole thing over and over again yeah. well it's like first <laughs> I don't know. well first it's like like the village council is being stubborn and then like and it's like okay so we need your support and then wait you can't say it because we need the grandma support it's like yeah. it's so uh, i don't know like that that's what i was t talking about the roundabout way like that's what uh, i didn't like i i didn't know taylor was gonna have an issue with that too i thought it was only gonna be me but... No, I was losing my mind. I actually like went back and checked the time that the conversation started to when it ended. And I was like, this is, we've already spent so many episodes on this arc and I just hate this arc so but, much. But like, yeah, we did, Ugh. but like, he asked for like what they can go from here, but like, yeah, we still haven't solved like the whole, the curse and like all the supernatural yeah. stuff and like why people go crazy. So that's, we still have a lot to go. <sighs> So. Oh, yeah, there's still a lot of things, but I'm talking about that from the perspective of somebody who's watched the other stuff before. I mean, mm. because this is a, this is supposed to be a sequel, technically. It's supposed to be friendly to new viewers, but it's also still a sequel, which makes no sense. If you've mm. ever seen this before, like, all of those questions that you guys have, like, I already know the answer to those things. So, like, if we spend time answering those, I'm just like, I mean, that's fine. I would... That's fine, but I just again don't understand what this contributes to the universe. It just mm. seems really awkward. And like whenever I read things online from people who are watching it too, the reactions aren't great. Everybody's confused. Because <laughs> it's not that that gory. Uh... Well, not oh, yeah, not, I mean, not not gory. I I'm, no, shameless, but I do like my gory horror. Well, too, it's... and this is so vanilla. It's it's not it's not the gore. It's it's like it's has nothing to do with like the yeah the lore or like the curse or why people are going crazy because it's the no one's even gone, gone crazy like because normally like Satoko she's supposed to go crazy at this point and start murdering people and we haven't even seen her so I guess maybe she'll murder her uncle but it's like we didn't get through any of that this episode and it sounds like the whole thing was Wait, to prevent. Why was she supposed to? Why was she supposed to go crazy and murder people? Was because the other well because the other arc no I'm saying because the other arc like. Everyone's gone crazy so far. Like, like Reina went crazy on like on Keiichi, and then um, you know, Mion killed everyone, and so, so I guess, and then I was assuming like Satsuko was all crazy this time, since whose ever arc it is, they usually well, go crazy and start murdering people. Well, she did, she did go crazy, but uh, but that, five but that's not, but like, are you talking about like when she screamed in the classroom? Yeah, that was more PTSD I don't think though. That was crazy. Yeah, that was PTSD. I, yeah, I think that was like. Where whereas the other one, it was like the other two times, the other two arcs were like more like murderous intent. So we didn't get that from Satoko. Yeah. She was just traumatized, yeah. not like not in intending to kill. Well, but, I, I mean, mean, at least that's what I would assume because like the other two also referenced the curse in both situations yeah. too, and hers has nothing yeah. to do. From her perspective, it has nothing to do with the curse. Well, I mean, with every episode, they always hint towards the curse of the festival. So maybe yeah, but we didn't we didn't get that we didn't get this that this arc at all. Uh, we did a little bit because they were I mean they were talking about how it would be her her and her uncle that they yeah. were thinking would be, get taken next. The I guess Joes, yeah so. yeah. Well, the, they kept saying Hojo, so it makes me think that maybe there is someone else from the family that's going to get the curse because we still don't know exactly where her brother went. Her brother uh, disappeared last year, or. Right, some other time appeared but there's still a a chance that he's still alive and around so maybe well he'll make a comeback maybe maybe know. maybe but like supposedly the curse is like is been whoever like got is cursed that year is you either got you either found dead or you disappeared and so maybe he'll show up right. but i don't i i, don't know, I just i just have a feeling like he i just have a feeling if you get disappeared you basically like you just you won't show up like you're basically just gone or dead yeah. Or like dead, right. so, and then the only I'm other thinking that this this is all just a debate. I don't think it's really going to be a happy ending. I think the next episode is when it's all just going to go down. Like they do all this stuff, it takes them forever, and then by the time they finally get to the uncle and Satoko, it's already too late. And so that's that's there, you kind of see where the curse starts yeah. making its appearance. That's what I was thinking they very too. Well, could be. Yeah, I have no idea. Like that's. that's... I mean, it's broken pattern. Yeah. Unlike the last two, like the last two were four episodes each. 
and this right. one is longer. So maybe, I mean, that I was thinking it was going towards a happier ending just because of that, because it broke pattern. Right. Well, and like, they were, like really focused on talking about how they're trying to get a happy ending with fate and everything. Yeah. Because it was so much more focused on Rika, like, uh, like really trying to stop the time, like change the timeline. So, and then, um, so like if if like if Sachiko does if something like like the curse gets Sachiko and she goes crazy starts killing, and like they don't get the happy ending then I assume then it's gonna transition to Rika's arc and she'll Rika will then be traumatized and she keeps thinking that like even though Keishi did his best like she, they still can't get a happy ending so that's what I'm right. thinking. Like, to me that would make sense because it's episode twelve out of twenty four. Uh, it's in it's it's way too early to have a happy ending I think. And what better way to set up the remaining 12 episodes than to have this giant buildup and have it just fail, causing like the other characters like Rika to just have a breakdown and just completely shut out the possibility of even trying to like defy fate in a sense. Because I guess fate's like the, the main thing that everyone's trying to fight here. So, I mean, it's mainly Rika because she, she's the one that knows about the separate timeline. Right. Plus, in Higurashi, I feel like the theme is it's it's always meant to be dark. Like, I seriously doubt that there can ever be, especially with, like, Japanese movies in general, like Japanese horror <laughs> movies, there's never really, like, a happy ending. No. It's usually something, it's true. It's usually something very dark. So, but the way that Higurashi has been, like, uh, portraying itself to us, I seriously doubt that it's going to end well. It's like, just an all major base. Like, Japanese horror, a lot of times, it's, it's always, like, like, just bad things happen. It's supposed to teach you a lesson or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, there is no plot armor so I, I guess I guess I'll have to wait till like next episode and decide what about this arc because yeah I I mean I feel bad for Satoko but like it general like overall doesn't really add much to the lore besides like adding more, more about the Holjos like being like the p- supporters of the dam so if they bring that in I guess but mm-hmm. otherwise like it didn't really say much about the cur- like like I'm only really interested in the curse. And so that's that's where I agree with Taylor, where it's like you didn't really add much to that lore. Yeah, yeah. And right now, I, I guess like Rika is the most interesting character because she's the one that just basically knows everything, and she seems the one. It's like her and Keiji are probably like the only people that are the key to like breaking whatever curse or like time loop. So I'm 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 waiting for Rika's arc because I want to know like I want them I want it to be like the 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 revelation arc where they start to finally explain things. Yeah, yeah, that would very well could be this not this next episode, but yeah, the the twelve episodes after that. I mean, that's basically like how the original Higurashi did it. They did it with twice the amount of episodes, but you know, still. Okay. Yeah, I suppose. But yeah, that's all I got. Oh man, but David, did you see the mom though? Man, Shion's and Minion's mom. Oh yeah, I was surprised she was in oh, there. Yeah. I was like, pretty nice. Cause like, the... she was nice. I I I, <laughs> I can back you up on that coup. <laughs> cause like, cause we didn't see Shion, any. I, I did not like her, but. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, cause like, cause the whole like the last arc, we didn't see any of them, and then on, for some reason they, their whole family is in here. It's like, where were you? Like the last arc, like it was, it was kind of weird to me, but whatever. Yeah, I kind of like how the grandma just nonchalantly shot out, like, throw him in the old well with the others. <laughs> and it's like, hold up. So is no one going to question the fact that they got this well that they throw people into? <laughs> like, they're, No, it's like, well-known fact. Right. So, like, with this whole arc, they're, they're just constantly just throwing in bits and pieces uh, at you where it's kind of like, oh, did you pay attention? You know, there's this, there's this, there's that. And I mean, like, uh, once they've touched on the subject and it's not, like, the main important well, it's not really important to the arc. They'll just brush it to the side. But you, as a as a viewer, have to pay attention to it because it's all going to tie together. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's convenient that they don't repeat. It's just it's just kind of weird that, like, they just throw it in. I mean, I've been just more accepting of it. It's just, like, the first time when it happened when they just brought in Xion, like, normal. Mm-hmm. It was just weird because technically it's supposed to be, like, technically if we, if we keep, like, reversing back to the beginning, like, technically it should be explained, but... I guess I won't complain about too much because it's more convenient for the viewers not to be repetitive. So Mm -hmm. I'm not going to question it too much. Yeah. So yeah. It's, uh, so so good. I like it. So yeah, I'm so excited for Higurashi. It's probably still, I mean, probably of the fall seasons, probably is still probably my favorite show. Mm. Hopefully it gets better for Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, I don't know. I like, it's, it's just, it's, I mean, 
I wasn't expecting to like it as much as the original. I just wasn't. I think it's just a hard, a hard bar to, to hit. Um, right. And I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, it's not like I, it's not like I hate it. It's just that it's, it's gone down a couple notches on the ladder for me and a couple of the other shows I'm watching it have climbed a little bit. But I mean, it could reverse. Like, I don't hate it. Uh, I'm just befuddled. <laughs> Ooh, big word. I'll have to look up what that means. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so... And I think... I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that... Or I think that it's going to continue on for next season. I don't think it's going to take a break. So, hopefully we have more Higurashi to look forward to in winter season. Yeah, all right, true. so that's going to be it for Higurashi. Um, we're going to jump on next to Damachi, which also had a season finale today. Yes. So talking I about heard it was really good. It was, so. Oh my god, it's so good. All right, sorry, you can take it, but man, this episode, uh-huh. fucking amazing. Good. Okay, it, 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 everything that I love like was in this episode because I, I I was first scared. Well, one I thought like um, well in a sense, okay. So Hermes didn't end up being evil. He just had his own. He just has kind of his own plan, I guess. God's will. Gonna, yes, yes, that he was basically hoping to follow. So when that kind of happened, I was like, okay, good, good. I don't have to completely hate this guy. That's fine. <laughs> and also, the Minotaur ended up surviving at the end, too. So I'm thinking, dude, this is perfect. And then, like, the the fight. And we even got, like, the Minotaur lore as well, which I thought was uh, was actually pretty sick, too. Dude, fucking called it, bro. <laughs> it was the Minotaur dude, that he fought. That was like awesome. That, like, the, just, like, that whole story where, he, where, where I first, like, also, like, during that fight, never thought JC Staff could have done any kind of animation like that. <laughs> Dude, like, that's like yeah. you shit on JC staff so much. I do. Oh, yeah, holy shit. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's just like cool. yeah, just how they did the animation was so nice. Uh, just like with the fight where I, I first thought like before like the resolution or you know, how it was resolved or what happened, I thought like, dude, there's no way in how like Bell can actually stand up to this guy. I mean, this guy was fucking like going like like a uh, shot for shot with with eyes. I was like, there's mm-hmm. no fucking possible way. But then just like when uh, but then you know that ended up changing kind of later on. Where and at the same time, you also have to realize. I mean, he has one arm as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but even like when he was using like his heroic like uh, ability, mm-hmm. like where basically like everything is shattered of Bell. Like the previous like little dagger he got from the previous Minotaur just shattered into like you know a hundred pieces. Yeah. Um, and just like it was just like that epic kind of like moment where basically then the Minotaur just walked like after like after like the the main fight like that they hit head on. He just says like now it's one like so one one is and then it's like we'll meet again. It just fucking walks off like a badass. I'm like, dude, oh, dude. that was it's fucking so awesome. Good. And then it basically like I know it kind of like resolved all the issues like when that that was that was actually happening. Uh-huh. But I, I thought like how, like just how it was done. I thought it was, it was just so good. Um, I, I don't know. It, it, like uh, I don't know if it was like just like from the hype from the previous season was just like the the bar was so low. Um. And like I don't know if it just like seemed like this was like amp- like it just I don't know if it just felt like it was better, but I just feel like, but I, I just feel like like overall it just had to have been better. David, right. you're, you're, you'd have to be like the voice of reason for this one. Um, I mean, no, I'm not gonna shit on it, but just like I guess I wasn't as hype as you guys were. I know because for me, like again, I don't pay like I'm bad at paying attention to animation, so I couldn't tell if it was good or not. I mean, Are you, you know what JC staff dude? I you, couldn't you tell. No, you can't tell when it, all of a sudden like they reach their. They go past their limits. <laughs> no, I couldn't tell. So oh, I need more yeah. training. So like, otherwise, I, I mean, it was a cool fight, <laughs> but like, the thing is, like, the Hermes thing, I guess, like, more bothered me just because I was so confused on where his like motivation was, and like, I guess, I guess, like, as the episode went on, I kind of understood more, but still kind of confusing. Where like, where he's basically, I guess he he wants the hero because they they say he wants the hero, like they want Ar- he wants Argon to come back, but I guess like they didn't really give enough. They didn't really show enough, and then it's like kind of weird how, I guess I I got like I was, I got I was a little lost when like when he said like he told Asphy to go wild, and then the Minotaur showed up, so I I I, I yeah, they cut I, it off. I think the Minotaur cut that. Off. Yeah, so I I yeah. thought I thought for a second that he summoned the Minotaur, and then it revealed that it was like you know it was Freya. So I was like okay, so that made a little more sense, but like does that transition kind of confuse me for a little bit too? So I think it was mainly Hermes. Like I was like just trying to figure out, trying to figure him out, and then been being confused with the Minotaur coming is what like threw me off for this episode. I I, I think with that, like it seems like all the gods have like their own plans that they want Bell to follow. 
Like yeah. Freya has her own plan. Uh, Hermes has his own plan. And then basically, I think that's like when uh, when Bell was you know thinking back to basically Zeus moments about basically like what he wants to do. Basically, yeah. just, you know, fuck everybody else. Just do what you want. I can... uh, yeah, I mean, I understand Freya because Freya's been the same. She just wants Bell to grow. Like, I kind of wish they went more into Hermes just because, like, the the whole, like, the whole blackmail and, like, and then, like, I don't know. Oh, Hermes has been like that. Hermes has been like that from day one. Well, no, the thing that Hermes, I think, was, like, he was scared of that basically, like, uh, if Bell was basically, like, sh- like seen to be be saving monsters, that basically, I think, that would, in a sense, be, like, the end for him. Um, you know, Loki would have, you know, you know, it, it sounded like Loki would have just, you know, tracked his ass down and basically would, you know, things would have just been done from there. Mm-hmm. But I think with this resolution, I think that uh, with this type of resolution at the end of it, I think Hermes was more okay with it because Bell is still seen as like yeah. he's fine because he, so I guess he, I always he like the mid-front, you know, almost the I guess I wasn't death. paying too much attention then yeah because the whole Hermes thing like I was I was just getting lost and trying to figure out his motivation so yeah I mean if yeah. anything you probably, probably remember, remember how he was in season one and tie it all the way down to yeah I don't I don't remember much from from season one yeah. so. Yeah, the end. The end, end of season one was basically when he first saw like uh, Bell's ability. He's like, "Oh shit!" He's like, "This is what you're yeah, talking I, about, Zeus." I don't remember yeah, that. The fight was cool. I don't know. It just seems to me it seemed weird that like that the Minotaur. I don't know that he just all his just result was just like you know the, the one win, one loss, and he just walks away. I thought I thought that was kind of weird, but. I thought that was awesome, actually. David, you gotta pay attention to the story, bro. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was like, awesome. Like, it was so <laughs> intense. Again, maybe you have to pay attention from season one and kind of tie it to season three, but those those a lot of importance to that match. Like, all so, I just uh, saw was just like, yeah, he remembers it from the rematch. He remembers the rematch from his dreams, and then he got the rematch, and he won. I don't know why he didn't kill him off, or why I guess he still won a rematch, but... No, because it because before it wasn't a, a rematch. It was his dream, right? So basically, it's kind of the same with Wiene. They weren't having dreams. They were kind of remembering what they were in a past life. And it kind of, like, when they were reborn, they had those memories, like, like uh, they came back. Yeah, I, I know that. So, so for the Minotaur, he was kind of just yearning for, like, his purpose. And then for him, that purpose was uh, was motivated by that, that dream he had of fighting Bell. He didn't even know who Bell was. He just remembered that he was fighting him. <laughs> Right, and then I guess uh, with him like coming into the uh, uh, into the outworld, right, like on on the surface, he, like he didn't really know what his purpose was, and he was looking for it, like why he was constantly training. And I guess Otaro probably did something to, because I remember in the beginning Otaro says like what you're looking for is beyond this, and that's what made him like stop, smile, and like continue forward to the plaza. I'm guessing that was like a time skip, like right before the the monsters attacked. And then uh, that's probably where the, the Minotaur came from. So, and then the fact that Otaro and then the other guards that Freya had set up around the uh, the, the square, it was it was all planned up by Freya. Yeah. So like this was like destined to happen. So okay, yeah. And... So it's just, it's just there was there was just a lot of things in this episode that I missed. Then that's why I wasn't as hyped as you guys. Then. Yeah. And then the reason why Hermes was was like kind of okay or like he felt defeated was the fact that he had this big plan to make Bell a hero. Because I guess he also is in love with the stories of, of heroes of the past. So he wanted Bell to do it. And it might be due to a, a promise he made to Zeus way back when. Because he did mention that back in season one. But I'm not sure exactly what that is. I don't know about uh, a promise. But I think he remembers like the stories from like Zeus talked about. Right. And then with the fact that his plan would have failed. Because it wouldn't have made much of an impact to bring back Bell's reputation. And kind of like have him save face. Like Freya's plan was way better. So yeah. The fact that he wasn't the one that conducted the plan, but she was, that's why he felt like he was the fool and not Belle or not, you know, anyone else. So that's why he was kind of okay with it. And then, uh, yeah, with, with Aspie bringing out the needles, I think the Minotaur definitely ruined the plans because I think he was planning to make Gross become even more enraged. Yeah, go nuts. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then, man, just the just the animation and the fight that occurred between Belle, <laughs> like, I thought it was on, I thought Belle was dead for sure after he was impaled the first time or he was, like, knocked out. Because this dude went through, this was, this was some Dragon Ball shit, right? <laughs> he got sent through buildings, he was, like, gasping for air, and somehow he was still able to stand up. So I don't know what happened, but I guess he leveled up right before this. Because, like certain mentioned, like, he was going toe-to-toe with, with, uh, with, uh, with Ice. And like he was doing just fine. So like for for Bell to be able to keep up with the Minotaur, like I thought that was insane. 
But uh, wait, the way that they ended it too was I thought it was so epic, and it it felt like you know there has to be season four. There's gonna be this like grand final match later on, and like it, it makes you want more for sure. Yeah, I just keep thinking with like, well, sorry, there's like uh, I, I was trying, I'm gonna try to cover like three things like after you were saying Ku. But, like, it kind of makes you think, like, what could have happened if they could have actually taken their time in the second season with all those arcs that they just flew past where we missed so many characters. And they just kind of, like, along with the story, like, we already know who they were, like, for anime watchers. Mm -hmm. Even though anime anime watchers alone have no clue about, like, any of the characters that really showed up for the first time in the second season. They never went in depth with them. Like, Naza. You mean, like, um, me? (laughs) Yes, Exactly. Like it's, it's it's basically like they did that so bad, um, which was just uh, which was which was, which is actually I mean I, I wish they would have actually done it because like it seems like like the story is solid like if if you give them like that like this entire season was one arc and I I just felt like it was done or at least like all of, like kind of like the loose ends in a sense that they started in the season were covered by like you know they were able to finish up with. Um, you know, like we got the Minotaur, like lore in a sense. So basically, we can figure like where he came from. Um, we we kind of got like the monsters wrapped up as well, even though it sounds like they're basically just going to be waiting until until I don't know when, <laughs> like when they're actually going to be able to like walk around with people. Um, also, kind of going back with uh, uh, with like also with when uh, Gross was fight was was fighting Bell. I thought like that, that kind of whole interaction was really good too. Where I thought I thought gross, like he just looked like a basic monster. I thought he was gonna die way back, but this mm-hmm. guy actually survived through the entire thing. I mean, um, he's like, like he's like one of the strongest monsters, isn't he? Like yeah, well, I thought I thought gross. It was I, I kept thinking like what you know the the, the differences, the possibilities that could happen with gross, where he could have easily become like the one rogue guy yeah. that just that's what I thought was gonna happen too. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I thought. And then he ends up actually seeing like the good in Bell, and then like, he basically just pulled back and couldn't like attack Bell. Like I thought like that whole thing was. I was actually like, I'm thinking, oh my god! Like, I was like, this is where they're actually gonna die, because like it, it's because like, um, because uh, Hermes' plan sounded. I mean, it sounded at that point like kind of solid, where you just have like a few people go out there and just die, just to basically show like you know, I mean, Bell's not trying to save monsters, mm-hmm. but then Bell decided to do his own thing where he just basically put a sword away, mm-hmm. and then basically or not sword, a dagger, and then basically then he just backed off, and it's like I really had like really no clue like what was really going to happen because with the monsters where it seemed like the arc were almost like they were, you know, they were retreating. So who knows when we'd see them again. So I wasn't actually sure what was going to happen to them mm-hmm. besides, like, you know, VNA and that, that group, I thought you know, they were safe, but it's just, I just kept, it kind of kept going like that. It just uh, was back and forth. was, I don't know how many different things. And I just had also um, that girl's the, the bracelet. Apparently that was supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's that's yeah. 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 That's yeah, what that's what I thought. Yeah, so yeah, it was I, so I he, so yeah, so Hermes did like put it on her so she couldn't take it off. Yeah, yep. yeah. but I don't know. It, it was like I don't know if it was just I, I don't feel like it was because like the the second season's bar was so low. I I I just like generally feel like this was a like a, a really good season. Uh, this season was overall. I I besides so even though I didn't get the hype of the last episode, this season overall was good. Like. Probably was the best out of the three for me. So yeah, this is. Uh, um, I'll do the the grading later. But um, the, cool. This I'm sorry. This was like one of the one of the shows too. When we were talking about music from previous seasons, Cause they played they played the, the the good songs or like the like the epic songs from the previous like the first season, like uh, the music when he like where basically where the animation went nuts. Like they played like that song mm-hmm. from the you know from the first season, which like I think it's one of my favorite songs from Damachi. So of course when you hear that you're just like oh shit epic shit, um oh so not not the bell tolls but then like kind of like the the chanting stuff I don't really care much for it but it brings back from the, the from the you the always have to have the chanting choir strand always I know right you always yeah you always gotta have it for those epic no because I love them <laughs> yeah, same thing uh well I didn't really to be honest with you I didn't really notice it or pay much attention to it oh my god. Well, the, the thing is, the, the moment was so tense, but it's the fact that it's the same thing they've been playing since season one, I'm assuming. So it but wasn't the song like... is so good, though. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's good. But again, it's the point where it's kind of played out. So you kind of just, it's not as impactful as it was the first time you heard it, right? Well, but that song, though, they don't play it like that often, though. And then, so when it hits, it hits. Stran, I still uh, have trouble remembering anime soundtracks. 
I know. I've, 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 I've basically gave up on you, David. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I, I remember game soundtracks so clearly, but like anime sounds like I'm so focused on the dialogue and like the voice actors that like I can't. I just I hear that and I don't hear like the the or and else and I hear the sound effects, but I can't just I just can't hear the soundtrack. Yeah, for me, it's just like oh god, the music. It's like David. Uh, cool. uh, like only only when it's like lyrical, I can actually remember it. But like yeah. My guy, you can't, you can't just focus on one thing. You have to focus on the whole package. I'm trying. The only, the only I remember, the only one I remember is like Attack on Titan, and the the composer Attack on Titan. Like every other of his other works, I remember. So he's the only composer I remember. I don't know. Music always hits me, like with, with these shows. Um, it's always music first, then animation. Surprisingly. Uh, no, like for me, it's gotta go hand in hand because if one really? thing is off, because if one thing is off, it just ruins the balance yeah. for me, and it kind of like throws me off. I don't know. Dude, there was a moment in One Punch Man too where it's like the one of the final fights. Animation was just fucking god awful, but the the song that played was so good that it actually made it seem a better like a better moment. But so you didn't just close your eyes and just pretend to visualize what was happening with the music? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because it, it was the final episode of the season, so I was already checked out in a sense oh, until that crap. song kicked in. Okay. Uh, I was so disappointed and just just numb to that to that season. But, right. But anyway. you know, like, uh, yeah. So like with season three, I, I'll admit, like it was a lot better than than one, but it wasn't as action packed as part one. Even though like season one didn't have as much either. The only action I remember yeah, in season one right. is just the Minotaur, basically. Like the Minotaur, he fought like that giant uh, monkey, like episode the two. Gorilla. Three. Yeah, yeah, but like the only action I remember, like. Being impactful was the Minotaur fight. Well, the Minotaur was up. Yeah, the Minotaur was. Everything else is just it's just everything else is just just standard or like average, so that's why I didn't stand but up the to Titan me. The Titan thing where, yeah, it was like that. But the the, the last episode too, like where that Titan. The last episode was, was just like confusing a, a because like fight. they didn't they didn't explain like Hestia's god ability at all. So I still have no idea. What so it was. like so that's why <laughs> I like, I that's why I only put the Minotaur as like the action. Yeah. But but all the other characters though, you know, you got to see some of their abilities. Yeah, but again, like. Yeah. I, if it wasn't, for, I mean, I don't know. I still see Damachi as an average series, so nothing too much stands out for me. Even the third season? Yeah. It's still mm, pretty yeah. average. I like, I I mean, unlike Ku here, I, I like the story. I first story. So I like I like going more into lore and world building, so that I didn't mind that, having that more than that than action. Yeah, I felt like with season three, it wasn't like, like... Because uh, like I, I wasn't, I wasn't it was kind of set perfectly. I, I, I wasn't really watching Damachi for the action, anyways. Dude, they're getting closer to the main lore, though, David. Yeah, that's that's what that's what that's stuff. what I want. Like, yeah, I want yeah. I want more explanations with like yeah, the the gods. But I want them to explain like the gods basically, and what the hell like the dungeon is. I want to go more in that yeah. lore. So you probably have to read the Latin novel then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I, we'll I want to eventually. So. Yeah. I mean, I, we'll see, like, because, like, the previous season, what happened with the, at the end of the second season, they, they released an OVA, and at the end of the OVA, they yeah. announced the third season. Yeah. Well, it's just that last time, they had, I think last time, they just had the movie, and then they had the OVA, then the movie, then oh, the movie, third right, season. Yeah. Keep so, hearing about that. So, yeah. so I don't think it's going to be another movie this time, but, um, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be, yeah, OVA, then movie, or uh, OVA, then fourth season, so. Well, we're, we're approaching 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, what... Uh, what score would you guys give it? I don't score, man. Ooh. I know, David. I know, but man, I would give this a nine to be honest. I'd probably give it an eight. So I, cause okay, so I gave the first season a ten. And... <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I gave so, I, I gave the first season I, eight. Dropped... So seven or eight. I may have so... dropped it to an. I may I might have dropped it to a nine. I don't remember, but I like this more than the third season. Well, so that's because the first season is when you again. It was I think it was 2015, 20 something like where you're getting right back in anime. So. Well, the, the one thing that I think it's really hard for anime to pull off is like if you know the first season where you're and it's a long running in a sense like a long running uh, series uh, where you where it's it's hard to pull off like a really good first season where it's like you're trying to set up the characters you're trying to set up the world building which I actually thought like the first season did really well on so I mean so I gave it like a nine a nine or a ten I can't remember what, exactly which one it was but because I... we've seen garbage ass anime that where they where they have twelve episodes and they don't set up shit like it's just like um, so I, I thought like if like characters are memorable you kind of have like an idea of, like what's going on and they and they keep you interested through like, throughout the entire 12 episodes or I mean I still thought the first season was average yeah besides the Minotaur that was stand out but I just thought it was just, it was better than average so it, I know, I the it series was... itself didn't stand up to me compared to all the other hype stuff we've seen so 
Yeah, I, I thought just with, um, I don't know, I don't know. Like the story, I mean, the story seemed like I, I thought it was it was being executed fairly well. It's interesting, but there's still a lot of RPG elements in there, so it's still very familiar. Yeah, but and yeah, you, you have the shonen, yeah. you have the shonen power up too, where he, you know, he he gets stronger based off his feelings. So, I mean. I'm fine with it. It's shonen. So I, again, I, that's I again, that's why I said average or above average. So anyway, I'm honestly, I never thought I would say it, but I'm hoping for another season. <laughs> so. We'll leave it there. Stran loves Damachi so much. So. Yeah. Fucking who would have thought? So that's it for Damachi. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll, we'll move on next to Staying on Million Lives, and yeah, because we also mentioned this also got second season right. coming in July. So oh yeah. man, this. The ending, oh my god, it's, it's, I don't like it at all. There's a couple things that I had issues with, um, but go ahead. You start with first. Oh god, okay, so they're going to introduce a new character here. They introduced the Game Master, and the way that they ended this, uh, the season was with a, what I thought was a, um, like, a what the fuck moment, right? Because... Why, like, what was the point of all this? Why is she, like, asking him, like, what is his justice now? Or what is his ideas now after having him killing the guy? It makes me think that maybe... Uh, I don't think we she, know. makes me feel like she's going back to the past to try to change uh, change the guy. Because he's probably, like, the... Like, he becomes, like, a villain after this, right? Because his, his, his uh, philosophy is that, like, no one is worth saving. Like, all humans should die. <laughs> and it doesn't look like it changed after this. Dude, um, this, this MC is kind of a beast. <laughs> like he's yeah. way different than a lot of MCs. So it makes you wonder, like, is it is it basically just this game master trying to go back to the past to change the the, the past to to change the future, right? Because I really st- I still don't understand the, the point of all this. Dude, it's it's tough to tell because I can't tell. Because I, I, I still don't know if the game master is good or evil. Right. We right. also don't know if the MC is like. I mean, he has like he has like good intentions, but at the same time, he doesn't give a shit about people. Does he have good intentions though? Does he really? Uh, well, he's saving. He, well, he's saving himself. Uh, I, I don't want to say he's saving his teammates because, in a sense, he's basically kind of thinking he's thinking for himself more so than his teammates. Dude, I also felt like, dude, also like at the beginning like with this team, where where they're basically like where you know like where he ends up like uh, kind of clearing clearing the uh, the, the quest. Mm-hmm. Where they find out, you know, he killed a guy, and the team just backs off. It's like, yeah, I got nothing to say to this guy. I'm like thinking, like, where to fucking back up the guy that saved your ass? Well, I, oh, I mean, right. I, I guess, well, he didn't. Com- no, I guess technically, wasn't the one that cleared it, but still, he did a lot of the work. Um, so I, I thought that was kind of uh, so I thought that was kind of like, come on, like you're not gonna really back him up. But then, um, uh, I'm also kind of interested in when he, where he he when he was talking about the t- talking to the game master. About uh, the real the real life quest that he receives, and about that basically he thinks that that depending on how that is cleared, like it improves their chances in the uh, alternate world. Right. So I thought that was actually kind of interesting, because and then I kept thinking like you know what if like in the future if if he fails one of those quests, like what happens then? Like does the does it just get like hella hard then when they get transferred or, you know, uh, when they go back to the other world? Uh, either that or they're what? fucked regardless because yeah. it was the fire wizard that was able to complete it this time right. so yeah yeah but it, but it made it sound like though i don't know if it was the, in it, they kind of made it sound like that uh that person that saved them like mm-hmm. that i, I kind of got the feeling like she showed up because he cleared like the the real life basically you know like how he in a sense saved her in the in the in the real world right. about how, i don't know if that influenced anything mm. i Probably not. No. You don't think so? No, probably not. Mm. But it's it's, it's the, the problem is they're they're all over the place. So there's not a lot yeah. of things you can look at for consistency and try to like plan things or guess certain things. So yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I, I I don't know. I'm I'm liking the MC though. Like this guy is basically he's kind of in a sense just telling it how it is. Yeah. Um, and it's and the game master is making it so hard to tell like, uh, you know, if he's actually trying to if it's something that how like, either changing his ways. Mm-hmm. Or if he's in a sense kind of evil and basically just like kind of going with like what this guy says and just tries to you know keeps going along with it. Yep. It's really hard to tell. I don't know, but it's like I still I I, I want to actually like see or like know what's going on. Just like I don't know if it's just 
the story that's inter- it, that's interesting. It's also like not a garbage. Um, <laughs> not garbage. Uh, isekai. You know, it's actually like well, in a second, again low bar. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the isekai bar is set so low right. that this seems really like I actually thought this was like fairly above average. I think it helps um, that it's it's it started as a manga instead of a, a web novel. The web novel is where a lot of isekai start off with where like they always start with a gimmick and then they just make things up as they go along because it's just people writing on a free you know a web novel for free before it gets turned into a light novel then manga and anime so interesting too is the mc like he i don't know he has like i don't know dude, he like there's every once in a while he'll get like those light vibes where mm-hmm. it's just like he basically says like the where like, the, the was it the the line that he says where when you said earlier where there's nobody's worth saving but basically, like, uh, but like the like basically the trash people should die first. Uh, yeah. I, well, it was just like, damn, dude, this guy's this guy's pretty dark. <laughs> like, I guess if anything, if you want to make like a reference to D and D, would he be considered like a lawful neutral guy in a sense? Dude, I don't know because 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 uh, at first, like, you know, you you the end of the previous season, you got the vibes like, you know, he because we, I think we even talked about it how it's like, dude, this guy's gonna start losing his mind because he just realized. He killed somebody, right? Basically, you know, he he set him on fire alive, yep. <laughs> and then killed him. So we're thought like, oh damn, this guy's about to lose it. Then he realized like he's not really losing it because he basically in his mind he says like like nobody's worth saving. And then I don't know if it's just like something he's just kind of going through his mind just to calm himself down. Well, it feels uh, like he's slowly tilting towards the dark side with this. Yeah, where he's basically doing everything in the like. Yeah, that's in the best interest of like for himself. Like he saved the guy from the like the yakuza, uh, yakuza, yep. because it's in the best best interest of himself in the game. Because right. you know, for like another person, so I could easily see that. So so far, he's definitely not doing things because of his teammates, but he's doing it for himself. Right. Uh, which honestly, I'm okay with because like just like the cold shoulder he was given from his other teammates, where they didn't even, like back, they didn't even like you know comfort him in any way. Basically, like well, how like you know he you know set a man on fire and killed him. Mm-hmm. They just basically like, yeah, I, got, I, I don't know what to say to him. It's like, well, you know, start by saying, you know, it, you know, it's not your fault or something. Like, you just fucking like, something. Like, are you a rat guy? A pat yeah. on the back. Yeah, <laughs> you did good. <laughs> yeah, it's and they, they could have. That was like a, a chance for them to like basically like tell him, you know, that it was basically because of that we were able to make it through, survive, blah blah blah. No, right. yeah, they just fucking backed off. It's like, man, fuck you guys. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's right. We're gonna have his back, and I can kind of see where, like, why he is the way he is because of his past and currently what's happening with his teammates after like the actions that that he's done already. So okay. I, I can totally tell where he's going. And yeah, like you mentioned, he's kind of a unique MC. Um, not the generic ones that you you normally see with Isekais, but yeah, uh, it's pretty pretty intriguing guy. Yeah, and then just the the premise of the show itself, I think that's what makes me want more is because. You really don't know what's going on, but it's fairly unique, as in like how they build the world of the story. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they did confirm a season two in July of next year. So I, at the beginning of this, I didn't, yeah, at the beginning of this, I would have never thought I wanted a second season. <laughs> like no way. Like I really wish other shows would have gotten a second season and not this. But hey, oh, yeah. if, if they got it, then it's whatever. You know, yeah. It could have been worse. You know? Yeah, yeah, it could have been worse. <laughs> oh, but man. Uh, um, what? What did you give it? I would give this like. Or what a, would you give? I guess I would give this like a six, to be honest. Okay. Six, Jesus. Yeah, but I want more. I, I do want more, but it, it's it's a high six, like it's six plus. Oh, okay. Right. So, I think I gave I think I gave it a seven or an eight, um, okay. mainly because like like you know <laughs> how me and David mentioned like the isekai bar bar is so low uh-huh. that this was this was it was actually a big surprise for me. Hmm. But I think I don't know. I don't know. We're just so into that isekai bubble that, like, we need, I don't know, we need to step back and, and remember how, what what the bar should be, and, like, I don't know, just... Yeah, probably. We have Log Horizon next season, so that's where the bar should be. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of isekai <laughs> Lex next season, so... Yeah, I'm not watching, them, like, many of them besides Log I might be watching, like, one or two other ones, I just don't remember. But... I still wish they were that one, uh, like... Grimoire Fantasy or something? Oh yeah, Grim Grimgar of Ash and Fantasy. Yeah, they need to bring that back because that shit I think was probably the best Isekai I've seen so far. 
You've watched Log Horizon, right? Yep. Just checking. Log Horizon is okay. It's 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 pretty good, but it's, it's I don't think it has anything to do like it's not as good as yeah. uh, Fantasy Bastions and Grimoire because that one had had consequences, right? Yeah. It had good. It was a more story, real. It was characters. more realistic for how people right. would behave in Isekai if you don't have like a cheap power. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's it. That's for that season finale of Standing a Million Lives. We'll talk more about it when it comes out in July. Um, I think we're gonna go next to Ikebukuro Westgate. Was this is this wasn't the second season, right? Uh, second season finale, right? This is only episode eleven, so okay. I, we're, we're messing up. It's it's very behind for some odd reason. Okay. But yeah, I got my game wars. Here we go. <laughs> Last two episodes. Dude, I from the beginning. Hana Natsuki was evil from the beginning. I said that like episode two or three when he got introduced. I was so excited when I saw he was the bad guy. Oh. I mean, was he, is he really the bad guy, though? Is is he really? I feel like he just got played. Yes! He had a person of his own gang killed. He's, like, setting up Makoto. He's tracking him on his phone. He's got the evil, evil creepy face. What do you mean? Yeah, I don't know. Can't be that bad. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I Because I kind of forgot about the guy, right? It's He wasn't really... Uh... I don't know. So yeah, that's the problem. Like when you have so many different like side stories going on, you kind of forget like all these other characters. But so, um, I don't know. I never forgot about him. But I don't know because the only because like, I think the only person that I really remember is Makoto and Takashi, just because they're like always there. But everyone mm-hmm. else was just kind of like had like a couple of minutes uh, airtime, or they like they only showed up in like one or two episodes, and that was it. But they weren't really like the. Like the the main point of attention in the episode, so you kind of just forgot about it. But I thought it was probably due to some some guys from from Kansai or whatever that came in and was trying to like take him over. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's new to me. So I mean, yeah, it looks like maybe there's a coup going on. Is kind of what I'm thinking that his final goal is. But yeah, basically, it's just like internal strife within the Red Riot. Red Riot, whatever. Red Angels. Red Angels. Oh, Red Riot is here, Academia. I believe so. Yes. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what it turned out to be. So for for forget about that thread that started in episode one, and then again in like episode nine or ten. Just just let that go, Ku. <laughs> Unless yeah. like that shady guy that he's wandering around with has something to do with them. I don't know anything about him. It's a possibility. I'm not sure because everything is kind of just up in the air right now. So mm-hmm. I have to admit, though, like stuff happened this episode. Like Makoto's mother got ran over. Takashi got shot. I was like, oh damn! <laughs> like I actually was very concerned there. Um, yeah, and I actually felt sad. Like I realized in that moment that if something happened to them, like. I would be very sad. And so at some point along the way, I grew to care about these characters more than I thought I did. Um, I mean, I didn't really care for Takeshi as much, but I did care for the mom because she's such a badass. But mm-hmm. uh, yep. I mean, that, that's just me. I don't really care about Takashi himself as a person, more like what he represents for a lot of other people. Right. Um, you know, him dying would just cause a lot of problems for a lot of people so i think that's more why it upsets me and also because i like makoto so much um mm-hmm. and i know that he really cares about takashi like that made me sad too especially because he's like getting set like framed for it like mm-hmm. that really that really sucks yeah but um, then, how, how lucky can you be though to be like friends with like the police chief and the detective so they yeah, right. just let him go i mean mm-hmm. what the hell seriously that that, that doesn't make sense well, okay, that's part of the problem with Ikebukuro in general, though, right? Because, like, okay, even though we have our game wars, um, our gang wars this this episode, mm-hmm. like, that's just like just, I feel like a lot of it is just kind of contrived. Like, mm-hmm. for example, um, the leader of the what are the Red Angels? Red what? Angels. Yeah, um, that guy. Like, I mean, somebody ends up dead and just no looking into it, no nothing. He is just like. Oh, it was the G boys. We're gonna kill them all. Mm-hmm. Like to me, that is like really not how a leader acts. And like, it, it'd be one thing if he'd been described as like a hot-headed character or something like that. But they literally have other hot-headed characters in the show, even like mentioned in this episode, to kind mm-hmm. of to, like contrast. I feel like against somebody like him. So yep. I feel like 
he's a leader and he should have a clear head. And that's not how leaders with clear heads act. And so like sometimes like the actions that are taken, I feel are very contrived, but yeah, I, mean, I wasn't well, expecting that much from the show and it matches my, it matches and occasionally exceeds my expectations. Like this should have been episode two, three or one, to be honest. Like how are you going to bring three. this up? There was so much like in this episode that it, it's kind of saddening to know that the next week's episode is going to be the last one. And they're mm-hmm. just going to everything probably. Unless they're going to do a cliffhanger oh. and like oh, season two announce. But, oh uh, God, there's no way this will have a season two, right? I mean, I didn't read the novel, so I'm not sure how far along this is. Um, yeah, but if you I don't really think, think there's about no it, way. It's, it's been like what four, like five episodes and seven filler episodes. So, mm-hmm. so maybe they can have something to work with, you know? Maybe. I mean, I don't. I don't think that they should have had this right in the beginning. I think that they definitely should have spent time more on lead up to it, um, right. and not so much filler. But um, just because otherwise you're not going to care what happens because you don't know the characters yet. You know, you're not invested in them. But right, right. No, no, yeah, you're you're right, but just the fact that I feel like there's so much going on that two two episodes like won't really do it justice, and that that's kind of like disappointing. No, I mean, because we kind of know basically what's going to happen in the next episode, right? I mean, Makoto is going to figure out, or he already has figured out. I think he has a pretty He's strong pretty idea. Right. Yeah. Um, that it's Hane and Atsuki and he'll confront him and he'll catch him in a trap, like somehow confessing or doing something. Shadow might come in to fight that like creepy guy that's with Hane and Atsuki. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cops, will, he'll have the cops there watching to like make sure that they get caught saying something that they the like, confessing or something like that. And right. and then the Red Angels will apologize to G-Boys and vice versa. And Takashi and his mom are probably going to be fine. Um, and that's probably just how it's going to end with them like agreeing to like continue to work together and make sure this kind of thing never happens again until somebody ends up dead and they don't want to look into it for two seconds. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, what, I, what, what more do you expect from a dancer? You know, like he's, he's yeah. too dancing. He doesn't have time for this. So. I just thought that was an odd freaking choice from the beginning. Like, well, I've talked about it. I think on every single podcast, <laughs> yeah. it, it just bothers the crap out of me. <laughs> like, but, Whatever, yeah, no. he's a dancer. Apparently that's all he does or cares about because every single sentence he says like somehow relates back to his dancing. I cared about these people because they watched me dance. I liked this guy. He's always in the front when I dance. Like, that's all he says. Yeah, like, this guy was the guy that was always up front when I was dancing. We got to yeah. go. Like, are, are, are you serious? <laughs> like, is that it? Yeah. That's all you got? <laughs> uh, I, ah. I guess. Uh, sure. I mean, you are the leader, boss. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Man, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of excited for the next episode, but not really, just because I kind of feel like it's going to be, like, just resolved too quickly. But uh, yeah. I don't know. How do you feel? Mm. I mean, I'm excited for it. Like, I'm fine with it. I, I think my expectation, my expectations are just lower. Like, I'm, I, I mostly just like enjoy it. Whatever they end up putting out, even if it's not great, it's fine by me. And I'm not hoping for anything, so it's really hard for me mm. to get disappointed by it. I guess. Um. <laughs> And like I don't know, I was just I was just so happy that I guessed that because I never predict shit in anime. Like I never get anything right. <laughs> so when he when when his shady ass face turned to the camera and he had the shadow above his head, you know, the telltale shadow that indicates you're evil or you're plotting something, I was like, oh damn. Yeah. And that made me really happy. And I guess um, he's gay too, I suppose. Is that what we were supposed to get from it? I mean, they did show a scene of them in what looks like to be a love hotel or just a hotel in general when he was taking a shower there was a guy yeah. in a bed wasn't there yeah yeah that's the shady guy i'm telling you that he was walking around with the, the guy all in black that was like old right so i mean he could be i wasn't sure if we were I, I know what you're talking about and i wasn't sure if we were supposed to take it that way or if it just happened to be like a understated like low profile place guys wouldn't do that come on taylor <laughs> doing like i don't know what they're planning there might be a reason why they're there i don't know mm, i suppose I but, or he or he could be gay i mean either way yeah. um this is the week that i finally um downloaded the, the the opening i decided i liked it enough it needed to be added to my playlist forever oh really mm-hmm. yeah mm, that's okay i actually like the uh the the end credits uh the rap oh movie. really see i'm not a fan of the end credits because I feel like it, it just like 
it's a nice cool down from watching an episode. It's just mm-hmm. very cool. And I think they say like maybe a few English words, but it's 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 pretty uh it's pretty relaxing to listen to. Yeah, it is pretty relaxing. Maybe I'll try to give it a listen again. Most of the time I kind of just mm. listen to a couple notes and then and then pass on to the next episode. So but yeah, I, I finally I finally um I finally downloaded that and I think that's the only stuff that I can think of that's of worth for this week, unless you have anything else to add. Uh no, not really. Um we just gotta wait and see how they, it concludes. So Episode eleven. Wow. That is something. Alright. So I guess that's gonna be it for Eek for Girl. I'll wait for next time for that exciting conclusion. Oh yeah, you bet. <laughs> um all right, and then we're moving on to Moriarty, because um, I actually caught up to it this time, so I can finally talk about it. Oh, uh, shit. You, yep. you should just give your thoughts, David, because with the timing of how we did the podcast, I've already watched the episode that I would normally talk about this week, and ta- I talked about it on the last one, so was that, what, it's episode, all you. Episode 10 was the last one The last one that aired? Or yeah, it was, a, it was the one where they oh. ran into each other on the train. Okay, yeah, so I just finished watching that, so um, so I, I, still, I like this series, too. Um, I thought that I really liked the flashback episode talking about like when they were kids. I thought that was way a stronger introduction than the first episode because the first episode, like it, I had, I, I could tell it was, it could be interesting, but then like, I was really hooked when they did the flashback. I was really into the characters. So, mm-hmm. I, and then I really like Moriarty as a character. So I really, I've been enjoying all that. I kind of don't like Sherlock in this though. <laughs> like I you do or don't, I don't. Like, I, oh, just, okay. I just, I don't like his design. I don't like how, like, goofy he is or the way they portray him. Like, I'm so more used to the serious Sherlock. So, like, it's, it's weird seeing, like, it's weird seeing man bun Sherlock acting all goofy. It just breaks mm-hmm. my, like, perception of him. So, that's the reason why I don't like Sherlock in here. So... See, I actually, like, I, I never liked any of the other versions of Sherlock. I've never been able to get through anything else sherlock related because i always hate the actors who play them and just the personality I mean, i've only so i've only seen i love this sherlock <laughs> i've only seen the sherlock movie with robert downey jr so that's the only thing i can go off with so mm-hmm. so that's what that's what i'm used to but um otherwise yeah so i so mm-hmm. i get what, i get what you're talking about when they say like it's like a dumbed down like <laughs> death note i kind of wish i did more the back and forth because it's like mm-hmm. it's more it's more well expo- exposition than than like solving the crime and so Actually, it was it was kind of interesting how uh like Sherlock actually he did um sh- struggle with his decision about not killing yeah. uh, Jefferson Hope. Like I didn't mm-hmm. I didn't think they'd go that route. I thought it was supposed, it sounded like he was like set in his ways, and they actually made him so that uh, just to uh, question it. So I thought that was interesting. Um, I but, thought it was too because that's much more human and realistic. You know what yeah. I mean? Most people aren't so dead set and never have any second guesses. So I really like that as well. Yeah. So, but. Overall, I still prefer Moriarty as a character. I just think he's more interesting. So I want to see. I want it to go back to Moriarty's perspective. So I hope it's just more, more Moriarty. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what their plan is to go. If they're gonna like split time between them or what the plan is. I mean, the show is called Moriarty, so I think if anything, yeah. it would you know follow him more. And but uh, we'll see. I I, I kind of um, I wonder if they're gonna show more backstory of the the other two two characters because i guess i'm kind of i mean i'm interested in the show in general so i like to see more lore but i'm still mainly interested in moriarty so if they just focus on him i'd be fine because i just want more more of him and i guess i guess more more yeah. mis- more mystery solving because everything's just been given so i want i would like to be more of a more of a mystery show but i guess maybe it's because like pe- they might think that like the story of sherlock has been told so many times that like maybe they're trying do like more move uh, do something different it's besides, besides the general like mystery and investigation so but i don't know yeah i talked about it like on, on last week it feels like everything up until this exact point that this last episode left off on has been like just prologue and introduction and so i feel like maybe the pacing and the tone might change a little bit going forward um to either be more about mystery solving or so i don't know i it, it, it could change i feel like i'm just not sure i mean i mean my favorite part has just been like with moriarty setting up the crimes like i i've just been enjoying that a lot just 
like seeing how his take on how he wants to solve like the problems of society so one thing i would like to see more of too because you mentioned the flashback episode and i'd actually completely forgotten about this character but i remembered when you mentioned the flashbacks the brother like the brother that convinces his parents to adopt them you know yeah that's like because, working with them yeah I, I'll, I wish Alfred, we would see more of him too. yeah we don't see much mm -hmm. more of him either so i mean that was a pretty like i mean that was a huge decision that he made to like betray his whole family and and join this cause and i would like to just kind of see more of what he's doing because otherwise why even bother having him in the show you know um it's probably because it was in the original like i feel like they're trying to keep it you know like with the original stories like try oh try is that like try from to keep other it. stuff i don't know if he is but i'm assuming like okay. the characters in here are from the original story mm -hmm. so I, I assume they're just trying to keep keep that part like close i don't know how how canon is, is still but I, yeah i have no idea the only thing the only gripe i have with any characters is the two that you mentioned that you wish got a little bit more attention um uh moriarty's compatriot yeah i agree i wish like they're there we know who they are we know their names they do a lot why don't we just like know more about them um and then also uh well no i guess oh and then also watson like i feel like watson is just a tad lackluster i mean he's got elements of things that i've liked from other watsons because watson is like the fa my favorite character from what little i've seen of other sherlock <laughs> things and he's got elements that i like but this one's pretty like watered down you know i don't know like we'll see he's not been around for long it doesn't seem like the yeah. uh the main like it just seemed like outside like like Moriarty and Sherlock they don't it's not really much focus it's just those two so I guess for me mm -hmm. I guess I'm fine if it's if it's if it just stays on that focus and it's strong like mm -hmm. I don't want to get too like um like I don't want them to get lost in the direction trying to like show the other characters and like wait like lose focus so Either way, it's fine. I think for me personally, I just want to see more Moriarty and him setting up the crimes. I just don't care much about Sherlock in this series as much. So that scene in this last episode, though, where they where Sherlock did seat himself down next to them and like oh, I don't bluff. remember the brother's name, but uh, yeah, but the brother's Lewis. name, like how tense he felt. Yeah, Lewis. Yeah. And then um, when Sherlock was like, man, it really would be just so cool if you were, like, the mastermind oh, behind that was, all this. Oh, that was really the, um... Like, yeah, that was he good. just leaned back. Oh, that part was so good. Like, that was the part that made me, like, get, like, slight Death Note vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I was like, oh, this is so satisfying. Yeah. That was just, that was just BM. And I love it, so. Yep. So I'm, I'm hooked. I'm super excited for more. Like, I, I really enjoy this show a lot. So... Mm. Like yeah, just for me, like I'm, I don't, know, I just Sherlock is just falling flat for me. So that's like my main um, criticism. So they definitely went through it for a strong choice with that. I think it's just either you're either gonna like it or you're not. Like yeah. I can't even fault you for for it not being your thing. He's definitely a huge departure from every other Sherlock I've seen. Yeah. So. And I think. But yeah. Yeah, I. And I know it's tw like two seasons. I think it's gonna continue winter. I don't think it's gonna take a break, so we shall see. Yeah, it's supposed to continue straight through. Yeah, so it's another series that I have to add on the winter. It's my already <laughs> long list. Along, yeah, like along, so along with so like, along with Jujutsu Kaisen, and and you know Higurashi. this show Higurashi, Higurashi, and Moriarty and Tech on Titan. So that's already four shows we're carrying over to next season, for me at least. So. Yeah. Yep. Me too. All right. So I guess that's it for Moriarty. And I guess, I mean, that's all I have lined up. If there's any other shows that anyone else watched, do you want to feel free to bring it up here. This is the end of the podcast. Mm. Uh, I got nothing. Okay. Um, what was it? <clears throat> I'm currently, or we're almost like halfway through season two of Golden Kamui, but I was uh, currently in, I was like uh, just texting Sasha back and forth while you guys were talking about those shows. We're thinking about possibly doing like maybe just like a separate episode with just talks about Golden Kamui. Okay. Like, Koo, you're caught up, aren't you? Or you're close? You have? Or do you have season three to watch? Uh, so I have season three. Season three, okay. Okay. But it's early, early talks, so you know we'll figure it out. We'll see. Okay. All right. Sounds good. 
Um, where oh, any... also, oh, go ahead. Um, real quick. Um, also, shout out to Adam Knight for uh, uh, sending us uh, uh, yeah. you know, comments and stuff in the videos. He's been the only one commenting in our, yes. going, yeah, in our video. So shout out to you, man. Thanks for listening. Yes, thank you for being active with us too, sir. Much, yeah. much love. Much thank love. you. It's been there since like, uh, since I think spring or winter at least. So, thanks. What are the OGs? Yeah, the so OGs. Thank you. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk more during these uh, these next few episodes, especially. And if you're not listening yeah. to this one, we'll uh, we'll, we'll, sh- we'll show you other Attack and Attack and Titan. Titan. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing the other uh, podcast episodes too, but Attack and Titan it was the most recent. So yeah, we'll do that too. But so shout out, shout out to you. Shout out to any so. So, if anyone else wants to comment, support. please do so. I want I want to yes. see those comments. I want to see that these yes. are real people and not bots. So, <laughs> or if you have thumbs down, let us know how we're trash, please. Yes. So, that, so that so that so sad. Holy shit. <laughs> yep. So that's oh, gonna be also, it. Yeah, we, oh. Sorry, David. <laughs> one, one more, real quick. We have uh, from the Attack on Titan. Like we, you know, we just started doing a separate oh, Attack on Titan on Sundays. Um, we got our first video. F- First over 100 views, but we're currently at 250 views or closing in on 250 views. For you know, thank you guys for watching for that as well. And thanks for the support for that. We never broke 100 until now. And all it took was a tech on Titan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like over like you know, it's been like was uh, over a year, a year, and we finally got. I mean, it. so a year's pretty yeah. slow. It's still pretty short for like YouTube channel. So. Yeah, I suppose. But anyway, thank you all. All right, so now I'm gonna end it. Uh, I want to thank the audience for being here. Uh, thanks. Shout out to Banana Boy. Hey, I don't know. How, I don't know how much you've been listening to. It's shout out to you, and then shout out to Johan for being here. Yep. Uh, thanks. Uh, shout out to my panel for being here with me today. Thanks, guys. Always enjoy talking to you. Anytime. It's, it's exciting. <laughs> exciting season finale sh- week. So glad you got yeah. everyone's thoughts for that. And then yeah, Ed. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be here next week or not. We're still sighing our plans but we'll definitely still do attack and target on sunday so at least look forward to that and yeah and if we, and uh winter season should start in two weeks so we get to do this all over again with a new yes. season so season so. yeah next season looks insane though for how many shows we're watching yep. uh we'll probably probably do a Whew. preview show uh maybe in the next two weeks or whatever but again to be yeah, decided we're so we're in here thanks for watching we'll see you later bye Bye. Bye. Bye.